Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching uh, Nile Cruise on Nile TV International and from a very special place from Manuel Roda on the Nile Banks. And uh, today is uh, also a very special day, which is Mother's Day. Wishing all mothers a very happy Mother's Day. And Mohammed? Yes, uh, Rana, to celebrate this occasion, uh, we have uh, with us uh, um, a professor, Dr. Nadia Iskander Zakhari, former Minister of Scientific Research, member of the National Council of Women, head of the Scientific Research Committee, and professor in the National Cancer Institute, Cairo University. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister for you. Um, uh, uh, Nadia Zakhari, for being with us. Thank you, thank and happy you. Mother's Day. It's my pleasure to thank be you. with you today and to be in this magnificent place. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. And, of course, um, uh, Minister uh, Zakhari, the Egyptian women working in science and medicine have been excelling in knowledge like yourself, dedication, and innovation for decades, despite the male-dominated uh, reality of uh, two fields and the obstacles that, um, that ensures. I want to know from you, uh, the obstacles facing women in their, uh, to excel in science and in public life uh, uh, what are they? Uh, do they still exist till today? And, and, and how are we improving in this regard? You know, the, the day before yesterday, I have uh, done a meeting to know what are the problems facing women in scientific research. They are the same as those uh, problems to which the men are exposed. We don't have a special problem for women and a special problem for men in the field of scientific research. And we have about 50% of those working in scientific research are women. So 50%? Uh, yes. Beautiful. Yes. By the year 2014, we were 46%. Hmm. And it is exceeding now. So for sure, it will be more than 50% even. It's because they had a woman minister? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's because they are clever. <laughs> Absolutely. Nadia, out of the box and uh, on a very special day like today, which is Mother's Day, um, you of course uh, um, uh, worked as a former Minister of Scientific Research, member of National Council of Women, head of Scientific Research Committee, professor in the National Cancer Institute of the Cairo University. How could you um, um, inspire today or uh, teach um, our, lit our, our little ones or the ones that are growing up or the, our youth today to be one day like you and as successful as you what is the advice to give them on this very special day? You know it is steps uh, I didn't graduate to be a minister I of graduated course. to be a demonstrator and I, I didn't thought one day that I will be a minister but it comes by working when you are uh, um, honest in your work and accurate and so on, this uh, promotes you to a better step. So I have been a minister after maybe uh, 30 or 35 years working in the field of scientific research. So I advise the youth that you have to take the, uh, the thing as steps. Those who are on the utmost or those who are on the top of the hill, they didn't come to the top of the hill except when they got it step by step. So has patience. Uh, dedication. <laughs> they have, have to have dedication as well. Has patience. Yes, and have that and dedication. Yes, and dedication to their work. Exactly. Mm, patience is the key word, uh, indeed, uh, Professor um, Zakhari. Now, Minister Zakhari, do you consider that you have uh, uh, broken barriers and shattered stereotypes, or was it easy for you? I mean, your personal experience up the ranks. Tell us about it. <laughs> I really didn't have uh, obstacles through my life, or maybe I'm the one that can uh, manipulate and manage the obstacles. So I didn't feel that. But let us uh, take it another way around. What happened to women in this field for the last 100 years? Uh, Samira Musa, we all know Samira Musa, the famous scientist. She was born by 1917, and she was the first on the faculty of science. And at that time, she wanted to be a demonstrator. All the uh, staff said, no, we cannot take a demonstrator, a woman as a demonstrator. But Dr. Ahmad Musharraf at that time was the president of the university. He backed her and he said that I will not stay as a president for Cairo University, which was Fuad University at that time, except if Samira Musa is a demonstrator. So look, after 100 years now, 
the woman is a, a minister for scientific research. 50% are women working in scientific research. So the obstacles, uh, we didn't meet this obstacle nowadays, but the obstacle was solved before we are uh, in this field. Um, uh, Dr. Nadia, um, you were offered the Cairo University Encouraging Prize, International Scientific Publication Prize, and the Best Staff Member Prize. And you were also ranked by Forbes, of course, uh, the Forbes magazine, as the 2013, as the first Egyptian woman having positive impact in leadership, and the 16th among the Arab world. What sacrifices did you have to make to achieve all you've achieved to today? It's only, as you said, being dedicated to my work, uh, taking care of everything myself. I'm not that type that uh, gives someone to continue the work or to make uh, the work for me. Uh, I usually make everything myself. Maybe this is tedious somewhat, but uh, if I don't make so, I'm not uh, convinced with what is done. But that's so tiring, Professor. It's terrible, but it's... Uh, um, it has a good effect after that. So the result is good. <laughs> mm. Because when you rely on somebody, you will revise after him, you will find many wrong things he has done, so you will make it yourself at the end. Because so let me make it effort. from the start myself. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, Professor, today Egypt commemorates Mother's Day to say thank you, of course, to all the mothers uh, well, out there. Uh, and the and fathers say, as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we, we say thank you to all the mothers uh, throughout the world. Um, now, um, uh, um, they have to, mother, a mother has to win. She's battling every day. Every day is a battle for her. Whether she's a young mother, uh, she's a middle-aged mother, or she's a, uh, an elderly mother. Every day for her is a battle thinking about her kids. So um, tell me, uh, tell us, um, tell our dear viewers uh, about your personal battles and the battles of people that you know and you think uh, uh, we should look up to. Okay, let me tell you about a cartoon I saw it, which is very, very true. It's for a lady with several hands. She has a hand to catch her children, a hand to work at home, a hand to go to her job, a hand to uh, manage the problems with her uh, husband or with her family, a hand to make everything. She's not making one thing at the time. So this is uh, the real life of mothers, really. They are doing everything and doing two or three things at the same moment. And this is uh, something that God had made in the, in the women. They can do more than one thing at the same moment. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Doctor, moving to the issue of uh, scientific research, how is scientific research incorporated into the sustainable development uh, sustainable development uh, goals in 2030? Of course, it is very important for the sustainable development. If you want to make sustainable development and mega projects, these projects must be relying on scientific research. We have many, many scientific research, and these scientific research are published abroad, published in international journals, and we are among the first 17% countries in publishing good scientific research and abroad they take us as references. But the problem is how much do we rely on this scientific research and how much do we apply this scientific research. This is not the condition in Egypt. It must be a condition in Egypt to have sustainable development, to have the project relying on something which is uh, correct, not taking anything and doing it like that. For example, if we want to reclaim uh, uh, a million fat dams, for example. We have to know from where can we get the water, the desalination of the water. We have to know the new grains that can uh, be irrigated with less water and with salty water. Uh, many, many scientific researches has to be done before reclaiming the million fat dams. And take any mega project, if you want to make a mega project, you have to get the scientists first and tell them, uh, give us your advice. Professor Zakhari, uh, um, how, uh, how can we get the private sector involved in the development of scientific research in Egypt? Are you satisfied with the level of uh, um, the participation of the private sector in scientific research, or are you dissatisfied with it? And what can we do to, to get okay. more from the private sector? 
Let me say that there are some private sectors that collaborate with the scientific research. But to collaborate with scientific research, you must have faith in, in the scientific research, and he must know that a certain benefit will come back to him. So if he does not feel this, he will not participate in the scientific research. Also, uh, the big companies like the uh, pharmacological industries and so on, there must be an R&D center in, the, in, the, in this company. Uh, I want to tell you that uh, a certain businessman was, uh, he believed too much in scientific research and he used to uh, share with us in time researches and uh, pay for it. And these researches improved his uh, factory and what his, um, I want production. to say, products, yes, his production. Some are like that, and some others don't have faith in scientific research, mm. and they get the so we technology need to raise, from outside. So I think we need to raise awareness and the, exactly, the importance exactly. of scientific research. We are very poor in scientific culture. Mm. We have to educate people. We have to tell them what is scientific research, how can you benefit from scientific research. Everything you have is based on scientific research. Yes. Even the loaf you eat, if it is uh, better, it is due to scientific research. Uh, but we don't, uh, the people do not know that. How can we um, uh, yeah, um, convince people to increase the level of awareness of scientific research? Through, we, through which means do you think, doctors, do, that we can do this? We really have to talk about scientific research and what is uh, uh, the benefit of scientific research in our life, in the media, in uh, cultural centers, uh, in the clubs. And we have to make many... Um, many events talking about the culture of scientific research and we have to teach the kids what is scientific research, how can you think scientifically out of the box, um, giving them a sort of research, whether in uh, scientific field or in humanities or in social science, in any field, we must give them a sort of project they do it themselves, especially that all the children can use the, uh, the computer and the internet now. And in schools too, doctor? Excuse me? In schools, too, we should uh, um, uh, have a role to encourage scientific research among uh, the youth. It is going on, you mean, now, or it is, I, di I didn't understand your question. Do schools have a role, I mean, in encouraging Ah, the schools, exactly, exactly. It is their role, the schools and the culture, all the media, not only the schools. You know, it's not the, the, the school only that the child take his uh, learning from or his ideas from. He can take it from anywhere else. Maybe the schools is for learning and for the, the exam and so on. But the events, if it is done in the club, in the cultural centers we have all over Egypt, in the TV, um, you will get it more than in the school. Uh, Professor Zakhari, what, what about the... Um uh, allocations that are set uh, for uh, the um, uh, for scientific research, say in, in the budget of, of the government or in the um, uh, um, finances of private companies and and, 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 and public sector companies. Uh, uh, do you, are you satisfied with the level um, uh, um, with with the level uh, they are at, or do you think that we should have much more. Uh, of course, we must have much more. And let me say that the KPIs by which we measure the scientific research of n is not only the scientific publications internationally, but the budget allocated for the scientific research, how much does the scientific research add to the GDP. Uh, these are the KPIs we measure. So uh, the Constitution said uh, that the scientific research will take about 1%. But up till now, um, it was not uh, done Achieve. that the scientific research take 1%. But there are other uh, sources for the budget of scientific research, as you said, the private sector, the application of scientific research, because when a scientific research is applied, some of the budget goes to the place where the scientific research was done, and some goes to the scientist himself, and some goes to the one who had applied this research. Uh, also, the international collaboration between mm. Egypt and other countries is a source of budget 
going to scientific research because yes. when we make this collaboration, it's not only that we uh, share experience, but 50% of the project is done is uh, paid from Egypt and 50% is paid from the other countries. So we don't rely only on the GDP given uh, from the country. But of course, we need more than what is uh, given now. Doctor, being a member of the uh, National Council uh, of Women, do we need more law to enforce gender equality, equality in Egypt? In some places we need and in some places we don't need. As I said, in the field of scientific research, there is uh, gender equalities. And in some companies, in some institutions, there is gender equalities. Let me tell you that we had the feast of uh, the graduates uh, at the National Cancer Institute 10 days ago. 50% uh, of the graduates were uh, ladies and girls. We don't have undergraduates. They were those who were taking the master degree and the PhD and the MD degrees. 50% of them were females. And in some departments, like the clinical pathology and the pathology, 100% of them were females. So in some places, there are gender equality. But in other places, there isn't gender equality. And I hope that we can measure the gender equality in different places in Egypt. Yes. Um, uh, professor, um, you have taught in many universities abroad, and uh, you have been asked to, to, to stay uh, there uh, and teach there. But you chose uh, to, uh, to teach uh, here and, uh, and uh, to serve your country. Now, uh, of course, we, we all commend you for this. But uh, uh, tell me um, ab about, do you consider this a sacrifice? And um, um, the difference between teaching, the, the feeling or the satisfaction that you get when you teach here compared to when you teach abroad? I don't feel this is a sacrifice, really. Uh, it's the love of my country. I, I mean, it's something emotional that I love my country and my daughters love their country, so we don't like to immigrate. Uh, but I didn't feel that I sacrificed because I took more than I want here in my country. Great. Um, doctor, um, what do you think should be done for scientific, uh, scientific research to um, uh, reach its maximum in our country and uh, do projects that uh, the children do at schools in science, for example, uh, help them in brainstorming uh, um, and um, in the future help, 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 help these kids on the floor? Let me differentiate uh, Dr. between... Dr. Anadia, I'm schools. very sorry because we have to go out for a short break okay. and we'll be back again. Okay. Hold your answer, please, Professor. <laughs> Thank you.